Hi, welcome to the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm your host, Jill Griffin. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and executive coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups, and today I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies and actionable steps to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence, and develop your career well-being. Ready? Let's do it. Hey, friends. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks to all of you who reached out and said that you loved the episode on micro-quitting. One listener wrote me and said it should be mandatory training in his workplace. I love hearing that, and I love hearing that the content that I'm creating resonates with you. Thank you for the comments, and keep the questions coming. On this week's episode, it's about figuring it out. Or as Marie Forleo says, everything is figureoutable. It's really a deep dive in resourcefulness. What I've been seeing is an inverse relationship between the vast amount of information available and the amount of determination and motivation to figure it out. I get it. You're tired, maybe even exhausted, but we've also gotten lazy in our thinking and our ability to problem solve. We want others to do the work for us. And many of us have lost our resourcefulness muscle. The definition of resourcefulness that I'm talking about is the ability to solve difficult problems, often in original, clever, and inventive ways. And I see this show up in our lack of thought leadership and in reciprocity. It shows up in our mindset when we think that we could have done something better if we had a bigger budget, more resources, or smarter teammates. And it shows up when we think that someone or something is responsible for our own professional development. Let me give you a few examples. I've had colleagues ask me for my strategic work so they could use it for their account. So they weren't going to scrub it and repurpose it with new thoughts or a fresh take on the approach, which was about a year old. And if you know anything about technology and marketing, one year is about 10 years old because of the velocity of business. You might be thinking, but Jill, this is resourceful and that's what everyone does. There's a difference between using the work to inspire your approach to your challenge or your client's challenge, and then directly using the exact work because you don't want to have to think about customizing the solution to the particular problem on hand. And yet that's exactly what you're paid to do. I've had a fellow coach ask me if she could copy my client agreement and my worksheets and exercises. She wanted to copy the client agreement that I hired a lawyer to write for me. She didn't ask me for guidance. She just wanted to copy my documents without offering anything in reciprocity. I recently had someone ask me how to pitch a corporate client, like as in what to say, how to script it, what vehicle should they use, Word or PowerPoint. And by the way, could I also look at their copy and their presentation and get feedback? Um that's what I get paid to do. (laughs) They asked me all that yet offered nothing in reciprocity. As a career strategist, that's what I actually do for my clients. I help them get ready in the strategies that they need to be prepared for in their career. So this is anything from reviewing the presentations, whether they're internal presentations for promotion their sales or consultative selling presentations for their clients, how they're going to practice or give a speech or a talk at an industry event. I prepare them with the questions that they're inevitably going to get hit up with. And then I put them in a high performing mindset so that they're ready for this. It's funny that someone would ask me to do that for free without any offer of reciprocity. So I asked this person if he had a business coach or a strategist that he was working with. He, of course, said no. And then he said, well, you know, I can easily figure this out. But you're not figuring out. You aren't asking the questions and applying the information directly to the new business pitch scenario. And then you're asking me to do the heavy lifting for you without any form of reciprocity. We've become incredibly lazy. Sometimes we call people in our industry because we want to pick their brain. And we offer them nothing, not a meal, not a cup of coffee, Not what can I do for you in return? How can I help you? Again, nothing in the terms of reciprocity. On the extreme, 
We ask a colleague how to spell something. We hold our phones in our hands and then we ask someone what time it is or what's the weather. We ask Facebook, what should I do in Miami? Versus saying, hey, I'm looking for the best places to eat when I'm in Little Havana. What else should I see or taste or hear while I'm in that neighborhood? We scroll Twitter and we get quick hits of news and information, but these bite-sized pieces of information that we are consuming so fast don't provide us with an opportunity to think. The fast scroll doesn't require us to think or form an opinion. It's just numbing us out or we're engaging in some level of like a doomsday scroll. And then because the art of thinking is a practice, you tell yourself you don't know. And the I don't know is that you tell yourself is just your brain putting up resistance because you ask it to do something that is hard or challenging. It's like a subtle version of learned helplessness. So if you're saying to yourself, Jill, what's the problem? I'm so busy and this is just an easier way of doing it. The problem is you've stopped thinking. Our brain is like a muscle and it needs to be exercised. Science has shown us that when we continue to exercise the brain, we have a greater chance of warding off any cognitive decline. And when you only take from others without thinking first, you are just regurgitating. And then you lose the muscle of thinking for yourself. If your colleague solves all your thinking problems for you, what are you going to do when they go on vacation or leave the company? Getting training is sometimes what you need, right? You need to be trained. And if you're working in the world of technology, digital media, healthcare, fintech, marketing, there's so much unknown. And it's an NBD, a never been done before. And that's okay because at some point, everything is an NBD. But when you, and I'm going to say it, steal thought leadership from another, you don't learn anything. You can borrow from their core thinking. You can be inspired by it. And with their permission and attribution, of course, you can use it as guidance. But the way you strengthen your brain and become a thought leader is not through plagiarizing. It's by taking in a lot of information getting curious, and then finding the way to make it your own. There's consuming, and then there's creating. First you consume, and then you sit and think and exercise your thoughts. You then create. I used to do a lot of ghostwriting for the executives in my company. I'd write their quotes for the press, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Ad Age, or I'd submit articles to industry associations on their behalf, and that's totally fine. It was what I was paid to do as I worked within strategy, innovation, and content. But it started to dawn on me that I wasn't helping them, meaning I was writing for them because they were busy on the earnings call, and that's fine. But I started to notice that before they went to the industry association meeting, they weren't interested in being briefed on the content or the discourse. Good luck with that. It keeps you small and you don't stretch your brain or grow. And you may not be at peerage. You may not be equal with your peers when you go to those events because you're actually not going to be able to contribute to the conversation. Yet, oddly enough, you wrote an article about it. People can sniff you out when you are all puff or a house of cards on a topic. Yes, get information from the subject matter experts around you, but then pause think and make it your own. Another way I see lack of resourcefulness is when you see others get praised and acknowledged. And you think if you had a larger budget, more time, more resources, staff, better credentials, more research available to you that you would have done a better job. Look, money and resources can help, but we've all seen some of the best businesses born out of necessity or during a marketplace downturn. Netflix, Airbnb, Uber, all started in a downturn with limited resources. So many marketing and promotional efforts are born out of ingenuity and small businesses start with little capital and resources and they do this all the time. Resourcefulness is a mindset and it is especially relevant when the goals you've been given or you've set for yourself are challenging. What is going to be required is choosing your mindset in advance when what's expected of you is difficult to achieve, or you don't have a clear path on how to get there. You never need to know all the answers. You need determination and desire. You need to know your motivation. 
And with a resourcefulness mindset, you are driven to find a way. You are amped up and prepared to solve the problem. An attitude of resourcefulness inspires new thinking. You can't read the label from inside the jar. It's like anything in life. When I hear about a challenge so often, the committee trying to solve it is trying to solve it from the viewpoint of the problem. And I'm here to tell you to Marie Kondo it. Mentally start, take everything away, but mentally start with how to be in the solution. Take all the opinions, all the points of view away from the problem and then rebuild from the vantage point of the solution, not being in the problem. So what does that look like? Well, if you didn't have constraints, how would you generate new ideas and visualize all the possible ways to achieve the goal and challenge that you want to solve? Resourcefulness turns you into a scrappy, inventive, and enterprising entrepreneur if you're working within a company or entrepreneur if you're working for yourself. It places you a cut above the rest because you have agency of self. One of my personal values is agency of self. And one of the fastest ways to get that agency is resourcefulness. I remember watching my former CEO when she responded to complex client challenges. And at times she would say, I don't know, but I know how to build solutions and I know how to find the answer. And another way to frame her answer is is the difference between, are you putting out fires or are you in the fire prevention business? Are you building your wellness and immunity or are you managing your sickness? I remember when I heard her say this at the time, like, wow, that was so easy. She was totally authentic and she's not going to pretend she knows it all, but she has given complete confidence and she has complete self-assurance to tell the client that she knows how to find answers. Your brain is capable of solving problems. And sometimes you need new information, new training, and new skills. Sometimes you need an expert. Sometimes the answer is outside of your skill set. And there'll be plenty of obstacles that you won't have thought of as you're going through your challenge, and you're not going to know how to resolve them. And that's okay. But it's all possible when you tap into the mindset of resourcefulness. For any of you managers out there, Managing development and human capital is so important for your team's growth and your ability to get things done. And encouraging a mindset of resourcefulness will enable you to lead your team. But listen, if you're always solving their problems, you will paralyze them and their ability to think creatively. Coach them. Ask them questions. When they say, I don't know how to do this, a really powerful question is you could say, what if you did know? What would you do? If all the constraints were off this problem, how would you solve it? What if you knew you could solve this issue and build a solution? And who do you need to be in order to build the solution? Hire for solutions before you hire for problems. Your direct reports are not necessarily your fellow problem solvers. Don't burden them with that. It always made my colleagues and teammates uncomfortable when one of our leaders would dump half-baked drama onto your lap, give you limited details, and then trash the company or the client and be all stressed out. He didn't delegate, he dumped. What he should have done is found a coach or a peer group and work on his own personal development. But another way that resourcefulness or resourcelessness shows up is that we expect our companies to pay for all of our professional development. Something that I've done personally over my entire career is paid for my own personal development because then I'm fully invested and I also get to pick and choose what it is that I need support with and where I want to stretch and grow myself. It's lazy or unfair to dump your direct reports without details, instructions, training, and support. They're there to execute on the solution or co-create it with you, but they're not there to be your savior. And when I built award-winning strategies and strategic frameworks for Coca-Cola, Microsoft, GE, my boss didn't tell me what to do. He gave me the priority. He told me the goal, provided data, information, and guidance. He delegated. He didn't dump. And the first time I was like, fuck. But then it got easier over the time when I built the framework and concepts. And listen, a small sidebar is don't build your approach directly into Keynote, PowerPoint, or Canva. 
outline the strategy on paper first. I'm a big like scrap paper and Sharpie markers type. Once I knew where I was going, once I knew the outline and the strategic hook of what I wanted to to say, I then went in and created the presentation, whatever that vehicle was going to be to help me communicate, whether it was, you know, within a doc or whether it was a presentation style, I was building it on a page, almost like a pitch on a page, doing that first and then creating the presentation. You will burn considerably less hours this way and not let a technology get in your way. But back to the strategies. There is no manual or precedent for creating a strategic framework for those world's top brands. It was about doing research, absorbing trends and marketplace conditions, making connections, seeing patterns, and logically building a strategic solution. And I approach this again from wow, this is really cool. I get to do this for these really well-known brands. How do I want to approach this? What would be a new way of thinking? And every step of the way, people will be like, wow, you're really innovative. You're thinking so differently. Or how do you think like that? And I think like that because I set my mindset first and then I consume again, mass amounts of information. But then I come back to myself and I close the computer. I close the phone. I don't look at any of those things. And I say, okay, how do I want to express this? And that's where you start building your own thought leadership. When you are not resourceful, it puts a drag on your team. Your results, what you're creating will lack imagination and excitement. You'll get mediocre work or everyone will be waiting for someone else to do the heavy lifting, creating a very lazy team. It's a skill and a practice, and a mindset that equals resourcefulness. What if you believed you could find the answer? What if you always believed you could find the answer? What if you believe that you can get what you want because you always assume there was a solution? How would you show up differently if you really believed that? So here's what to do to create a resourceful mindset. First, Resourcefulness is a hundred percent mindset. Thoughts like I can figure this out. I'll engage with others. I'll get their input. There's absolutely a solution. You must wholeheartedly hold the belief that you are competent and adequate and you will achieve the goal. This belief is the first step you take when getting things done. When you are self-assured and confident, those feelings will help you like yourself more and trust yourself and your creativity and innovation will flow. Stay open, explore options for the solution. Ask yourself, what would you do if the same challenges weren't there? Number two, be creative. Resourcefulness is about having the mindset to look at what's in front of you and to optimize what you have to work with. Being imaginative is not always about creating something new, but also with a little ingenuity, it could be about making old things work better. Incremental innovation. Remember that the answer to how is yes. You have to try it and only through trying it will you figure it out. Three, positivity. Train yourself to see the positive benefits in every situation. As you cultivate a positive outlook, you will see that it'll be easier and easier to come up with solutions. Fear and frustration only block your innovation. Okay, my friends, if you are interested in learning about how I work with clients to build their mindsets and to coach them strategically, check out the show notes to get more information and have a great week. I'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this and you want more information, go to my website, jillgriffincoaching.com. There you can find information on how to work with me one-on-one or my group programs, or even bring me into your workplace. I'll put the link to my website in the show notes. But hey, listen, before you go, do me a favor, rate and review this podcast because it definitely helps me get the word out to people everywhere so that they can also thrive in the workplace. All right, friends, I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.